I'd like to welcome everybody um, this evening. And uh, always thanks, Sandra, for joining us. It's a real connection to the land, especially in this uh, week of October 7. Um, I'd like to open just to let people know our friends Vicky in the UK and around Australia. Um, I ventured out to host a meeting um, of Christians to, with the title Comfort My People, um, Prayer and Worship for Israel to remember the October 7 um, horror. I felt the Lord put it on my heart uh, to do this, so I stepped out bravely to organise um, a meeting with Christian leaders and pastors in Brisbane. And it stems from the fact that I was in Israel when it happened. After October 7, I asked the Lord, why am I firstly privileged to be in Jerusalem for Simchat Torah and the Feast of Sukkot? And yet in Jerusalem, when it all went terribly wrong, I felt the Lord gave me a stronger desire, almost like an obligation to speak even more passionately and more often about the importance of the people of Israel, 1948, the, represent, the misrepresentation in the Christian church about her place and all the wrong doctrine that is part of the end times fever. So it seemed a natural thing for me to do to remember October 7 here in Brisbane. I had the experience from the being on the Queensland Never Again uh, event and um, had built strong connections with the Christian leaders and even some politicians. So to make it successful, we needed a few things. I learned to use Canva and the invitation for the invitations, the slideshows, and to make the CFOIC banner, which several people took photographs of. And I learned how to organize the run sheet the way the Lord asked me clearly who to ask and what to plan. I put little pictures of all the hostages, and I my intention was for the people who attended to take a little uh, kind of like wallet-sized photograph of a hostage and pray for them. But in doing this, I discovered at least 30 of them had been um, formally uh, notified that they were deceased. So that allowed me to put a board together of the deceased hostages and so we were lighting candles for the um, for the hostages' release and for the deceased hostages to remember them. So we formed a worship team and we thank Linnea and Michelle for providing the worship and they travelled together to each other's house and put in a lot of practice for that. And we had a team on the night who uh, our team on the night who did marvellously at welcoming and ushering people. And I see that um, Donna was part of that team. And so thank you, Donna. And um, yay, go team, Don go team Brisbane. And um, so, um, uh, yes, and we, we, if we do another event, we'll have a photographer, but I didn't intentionally organize a photographer because of the sensitivity of why we were gathering. So heartache and heart-wrenching memories. I didn't think that we should be photographing everybody. So um, the Christian leaders who prayed had very positive words about the event. One posted pictures on the face on their Facebook that evening. One thanked me for asking him to be part of the night. Two pastors said to, to, they were saying to me, well, if the event is successful, we know Pam organised it. Um, one leader who, who prayed made a personal invitation to me to make sure I was attending his next event. And uh, the vast majority of the attendees, the pray prayers and the guests stayed chatting for over an hour after the event ended. And to, to, for me, that's a good indication the intention of the evening was well received. So on the on the evening, for those who didn't like 
obviously only the Brisbane people attended. Um, we heard a testimony from Sandra because it was um, Shabbat in Israel. Sandra pre-recorded um, a video for us and we were blessed to have other Jewish mothers come and light the candles for the hostages. We then had seven um, prayers, a prayer of repentance by the church for not loving the Jewish people as we should have, for our governments, for the devastated families in the Gaza envelope and the northern borders, for all of us to call upon God for our protection. We prayed over some beautiful young IDF soldiers and prayed for Israel to have a victorious and sweet new year. We prayed the ironic blessing and we prayed for the Australian Jewish community who have been suffering anti-Semitism in their schools and suburbs. And we finished with Arm Israel High. And um, so we were privileged to have the two young IDF soldiers who, who brought the connection from Israel to our night because their friends were in the dance party. And uh, they, they were very moved. And I heard a report from their friend who lives in Melbourne that that they were telling the people in Melbourne what the event was like. And so the, so we had good comments, even reached to Melbourne. So I just um, took the time to tell you what we did to remember October 7 um, with CFOIC and the communities in Studeria and Samaria. So thank you, Sandra, for letting me uh, share that. And now with all, without further ado, we'll introduce Sandra. Thank you, everyone. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you, Pam, for that uh, description of the event. I personally am so sorry that I was not able to be there in person. I would have loved to do that. Australia is a bit of a far journey to come for, for that event, especially during the holiday season. But uh, I, I know, Pam, you know, when you when you said that one fellow said uh, if it was a success, we know Pam organized it. Uh, Pam, I just want to thank you personally and in front of everybody here that you've, you're doing an amazing job. Um, you stepped into big shoes that Joy left for you, but you're going even beyond anything that any of us have done until now. And I just want to tell you how appreciative I am of what you're doing and bringing the word, not only of Israel, but of Judea and Samaria, you know, far and wide in Australia. And I know you're getting ready for Shmuel to visit at the beginning of the year. And uh, if anyone here who's on this uh, meeting now uh, thinks you can host something uh, or help Pam in any way for that, that would be great. Uh, and just remember, if Pam is organizing it, it's going to be a success. So if you want to be part of the success, this is your opportunity. All right. Anyway, so yes, October 7th, um, October 7th uh, came last week. And um, it really, you know, in Israel, there's been a lot of discussion. How do we mark the one year anniversary? And there's actually different one years. OK, because, you know, there are two calendars that we follow. Oh, my picture went away. How did that happen? One second. Okay, something's weird, but okay. Um, the, as you know, there are two separate calendars that we follow. One is the same calendar we all have, the January, February, March one. And the other one is the biblical calendar, which actually in the Bible is marked by the first month, second month, et cetera. And th those are lunar, those are lunar months. Um, and that and, and the lunar calendar is actually shorter than the uh, solar calendar. So things and we have a leap year. It doesn't matter. But the point is, it the the Hebrew date doesn't fall the same time as the English date each year. There's always a discrepancy. And the Ma October seventh massacre uh, didn't just occur on any day. It occurred in the middle of a holiday. It occurred on Simchat Torah which literally means rejoicing in the Torah, rejoicing in the Bible. And it's a holiday that is the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles. And um, so it, it's particularly significant for us. It, and, and we believe that our enemies chose that day 
on purpose because they wanted to destroy our joy. Uh, and it's actually very interesting. Um, the Yom Kippur War, which took place 51 years ago, last year was the 50th anniversary to the Yom Kippur War. The Yom Kippur War in the regular calendar fell on October 6th. Uh, Yom Kippur, as I'm sure you know, is the holiest day of the Jewish calendar. It's the Day of Atonement. And it's a, a, a day which we just came off of. This past Friday night, Saturday, was the Day of Atonement. It's a day of fasting and prayer. Uh, it's an extremely serious day. And it was on that day, and, and the Egyptians and the Syrians chose that day on purpose to launch a surprise attack against Israel in 1973. They didn't care that it was October 6th. They cared that it was Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. Um, but in, in the Arab world, afterwards, it is known as the October 6th War. And to me, and I think many, most people in Israel, believe that that coming together of the dates, October 6th, the day before the surprise attack, marked the 50th anniversary since the surprise attack of Egypt and Syria against Israel in 1973. And then the next day, October 7th, being the holiday of the um, of, of rejoicing in the Torah was purposely aimed. And as if a message that was, that they were giving to us, not just that they wanted to hurt us, that they wanted to kill us, that they wanted to defeat us, okay? But they wanted to mock us. They wanted to destroy our holy days, not just our holidays, but our holy days. They want to, to destroy our joy and they, wanted, they want to combat our faith. Okay, and so I think um, this is something that is very important. Most people, and you understand this because you're so biblically oriented, but if you look at the way government leaders and people all over the world look at it, for them, it's October 7th. And they don't realize that that's just not another day in October, but this day was, was selected. So therefore, we actually had two, we're, we're, we're dealing with memorializing this event different times, October 7th, there was definitely a day of remembrance on television, um, memorial ceremonies in different places. And it, it was a day, I would say, in the psyche of everybody in Israel of recalling what happened, not just on that day, but what happened in this whole year since. We are in a war that has not ended. And that's also making this memorial time very challenging because it's one thing to remember something that is over. We are still in the middle of it, and we don't know how it's going to end. Um, and of course, you can be optimistic and you can be pessimistic, but even if you're very optimistic, and I tend to be an optimistic person, you still don't know exactly how it's going to end and when it's going to end. You you may have the long, long, uh, long vision, okay? But you don't necessarily know what's going to happen in the next year or two or the next few months or whatever. So that, of course, is making this whole period of time very challenging. Um, but we are um, we are in the middle of a holiday season. And so I, I thought I just want to kind of run you through what this holiday season looked like for us um, here in Karnei Moron in Judea and Samaria. But I think that what I am going to reflect on now is probably true of m most of Israel, every, all of Israel at some level. But what I'm focusing on also is on uh, people in Israel who are religious, who are biblically oriented, um, who take take these holidays, not just as um, time off from work or, you know, oops, the kids are home from school, got to figure out how to entertain them, but a, a, a holidays with tremendous religious and spiritual content and how that has come together uh, with this one year anniversary. So Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, uh, fell on October 2nd. And so, of course, that was right before, you know, the, the one-year anniversary, but we're already talking about, you know, the one-year anniversary. And that's the Jewish New Year. And we believe that, that, we believe that God actually judges not just the Jewish people, but judges all of mankind uh, on this day, on the Jewish New Year. And um, and this is a, a period of time when when, it's, it's like a day of judgment in a way uh, when we come before God and we we pray that he will forgive, forgive us our sins and bless us with a good year coming. 
And that actually launches a 10 day period that culminates in the day of atonement, where we believe the final judgment is given. We have that whole period of time to repent our ways and to maybe improve our situation with God for the coming year. And, and that's how it is every year. This year, it was so different because you keep looking back at where you were last year. Last year on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur and that whole 10 day period, you're, you're going along, you know, assuming that the way it was the year before is going to be the way it is the coming year. You know, everybody, of course, is doing that individual, you know, repentance vis-a-vis -vis God. But and you also you never really know what the year is going to produce. And you and of course, things happen and things happen all the time. And you have that broad awareness that you hope the year will be a good year, but you never know. But nobody anticipated the disaster that this year was. And it wasn't just a disaster for this or that individual person. It was a disaster for the entire nation. It was a disaster to, for all of Israel. And I would say, and I think, Pam, you probably, you know, really caught on to this um, much more than I did uh, when you had the wisdom to turn this event, commemorate, commemorate October 7th, into an event that you reached out to the Jewish community uh, in, in Brisbane, because you understood better than I do sitting here in Israel, that it's not just the Jews of Israel that were affected, but it was the Jews all over the world who have suffered from anti-Semitism, who have suffered from all kinds of, and who are worried, who are so terribly worried about what's going on in Israel. So, um, you know, none of us could have anticipated, this is just a whole different level. So as we entered the new year this year, everybody wished each other, not just happy new year, but may this coming year be better than this last year. That was on everybody's mind. Um, there are some very important prayers that we spend a good time of the day, like on Rosh Hashanah, we're spend, on Yom Kippur, we spend the entire day in the synagogue. We take a two hour break in the middle, but from eight in the morning until about seven o'clock at night, with except for this little break in the middle, we're in synagogue the whole time and we're praying the whole time. We're praying together as a congregation and we're also praying individually. It's an extremely spiritual and fulfilling time. And we also have prayers for a few hours uh, the night before, which was Friday night, uh, let's say from about six to eight, you know, something like that. Um, but there's, there's this one prayer that is really in the middle, maybe towards the end of the service, that we say on the both of the days of Rosh Hashanah plus on Yom Kippur. And it's a beautiful poem or prayer that was written hundreds of years ago. And in the middle of it, we are turning to God. First of all, we're recognizing that God is the master of the universe. He's the one who in charge of our fate, both our national fate and our individual fate. Um, and then we get to a point where we, we basically are turning to God and we will say, you are the only one who knows who will live and who will die, who will suffer and who will rejoice, who will be ill and who will be healthy, who will die by sword, by war, and who will live and defeat the enemies. And on and on and on this prayer goes. Now, as I think you all know, my brother lost his son uh, in January uh, in fighting in Gaza. And of course, this has affected our whole family, but nothing more than, than the, in, the immediate family itself. But this is something also he is in, our, although in Karnei Ron, our own town, just 11,000 people, we've lost 11 people, uh, eight soldiers and three civilians on October 7th at the Nova party. But um eight soldiers uh, fell since October, on October 7th and since in the war and whatever. So we are a community that I would say is wrapped in, in mourning to a certain degree, not unlike um, communities all over Israel. And I would say Judea and Samaria, the people here have a, on average, a higher level of commitment, a higher level of um, 
of a pioneering spirit. It's part of who we are and what our ethos is. And so unfortunately, there's quite a much higher percentage of, of soldiers who have fallen who are from Judea and Samaria than our, our you know, numbers in the general population. But anyway, but in our synagogue, the, the only family who lost somebody uh, directly like this was my brother's family. And my brother every year leads the prayers. He's one of the people who leads the prayers. He has a marvelous voice and he also has enormous passion and feeling and spiritual, spiritual connection to God that he is able to convey um, to everyone. It's very uplifting. And you can just imagine him singing this prayer, chanting this prayer, who will live and who will die. And, and how difficult it was for him. You heard him weeping um, and you it pulled us all back. How all of us, but especially this family, my brother, our family, um, a year ago, he said the very same prayer and he had no clue. Of course, no one had any clue that in this year, that means that God would have determined the fate of Amichai last year on the Day of Atonement and he fell in January and we had no idea, we had no clue. And of course, that just, it, it becomes such a powerful, difficult experience. So difficult in an emotional way and difficult in a spiritual way. And, and yet there was something I found very comforting in the prayers because as you can imagine, there are questions you know, these these wonderful, pure, pure, righteous people who fell and who suffered. Um, why? And of course, people direct those questions to God. And we encourage that. Yes, direct those questions to God. Look and see if God can bring you an answer, can bring you comfort. And there are no good, there are no answers that are clear cut on any of this kind of thing on a on a personal level. But there is a part of us as we're saying these prayers that enables us to confirm the fact at the end of the day, regardless of our questions and regardless of how much we understand or don't understand, God is in charge. And if we can just release, release our, 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 ourselves to God and, and basically saying to God, and this is what the prayers help us to do, because the fact that we are reading prayers that have been written by very wise people over the centuries, first of all, it gives us a a wonderful sense of connection that we're praying the same thing that our ancestors pray. We quote a lot of scripture, etc. but it also feeds us the teachings that need to fuel our prayers. And those teachings are, God, you are in charge. We may not understand. We may not, we may be in pain, but we do believe not only that you're in charge, but you're in charge, not as a nasty dictator that, you know, the pagan gods, you know, the, the pagans would believe that their gods, you know, they just did whatever they wanted. And they, you know, they decided to kill someone because they felt like it, they did. And so the pagans would try to bring offerings. That's the original word. Offering comes from this pagan idea. Of course, we, we use it in a different way today, but comes from this pagan idea, basically going to bribe God. And if you bribe God, he's going to do what you want. And what is so different in the way we see things, and I'm sure you share this with me, is that we God doesn't work for us. We work for God. And that we don't necessarily understand everything. We don't understand a lot, but we also don't have to, we're not controlling the word. We're not running the world. If 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 these people fell, there was a reason, even if we don't understand it, and somehow God is gonna work all this out. Um so that. That is, that's to give you an understanding, you know, I'm sorry if I'm a little depressing, but I just want to try to convey to you, you know, what our holidays look like um, until now, the, the High Holy Days. Now, we are now about to celebrate the Feast, Feast of Tabernacles. That begins tomorrow evening. And uh, in fact, I wish you were all here in my kitchen because I just baked just before I took it out of the oven, just before we started, I baked this, what I think is a delicious chocolate pecan pie. And uh, so we're all involved in baking and cooking. And that's also, you like that, Anne. <laughs> and, and, you know, it's also something we're involved with also for the holidays, the, the even the high holy days, it's not a day of, of, um, of being sad. 
It's a day of rejoicing because we are crowning God our king. And by the way, if you want a wonderful, I'm not going to go through it now, but write this down. Take a look at Nehemiah 8, okay? And you want to see um, how basically Nehemiah is saying to the nation, you need to celebrate this holiday. Uh, this is not, um, you know, we're going to, it's talking about Sukkot, it's talking about Rosh Hashanah, and basically he says, go and joy and feast, and and it's that Nehemiah story in Nehemiah 8 is considered um, uh, the basis for, you know, over time, questions were asked, if this is such a serious day of, of judgment, maybe we should be fasting, maybe should we should be praying all day long, and then you go and look at Nehemiah, and he gives the answer, no, it's a day also of rejoicing, okay, so that and, and that really is, and then we get to the Feast of Tabernacles and there's absolutely unmitigated joy. If you see in scripture how, how the Feast of Tabernacles is described, there's words of joy and celebration connected with that holiday in, every, in almost every place where it's mentioned. The, the holiday is mentioned actually in Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, okay? And in nearly every reference, there is a reference to joy or celebration. So for us, I would say more than any other holiday of the year, Feast of Tabernacles is a holiday of joy. And of course, the last day is the joy in the Torah. Uh, and the source of that is the fact that we have um, an annual cycle of uh, reading the Torah that culminates on the Feast of Tabernacles. Right after the Feast of Tabernacles, we start again with Genesis. So um, we are literally celebrating the you know, conclusion of the annual cycle of reading the Torah, the five books of Moses. And it is a day of joy. And for weeks now, uh, discussions in communities, in synagogues, in the, the newspapers and magazines of the religious Zionist community in particular, but beyond that as well, the question is, has been, how do we celebrate Simchat Torah? How do we celebrate the completion of the Torah when it is also the real anniversary? And again, I'm going back to the, the Hebrew date. The Hebrew date, the actual massacre, is the more meaningful date, is not October 7th, but Simchat Torah, because our enemies, it's not just that we feel more connected to the biblical calendar, but our enemies chose our holiday to murder and, and, and rape and torture. Uh, our people. So that's the real anniversary. How do we do this this year? And there's been a lot of conversation and people are going in a lot of different directions and there's no one way. You know, this is a lot about how we feel. Um, there's no question it's still going to be a holiday. There's no question we're still going to be in synagogue. We're going to sing the songs of praises to God that we always sing. Those things don't change. But there's a lot of leeway here in how we do things, a lot of things that are more custom than anything else. Do we change anything? So there are some people that said, don't change a thing. Because if it's bad enough that our enemies destroyed our joy a year ago, if we allow them to continue destroying our joy, they will have won in a certain sense. And yet there are other people that are saying, how can we continue to dance and celebrate as if nothing happened a year ago? We lost so many people. 1,200 people were murdered on one day, this day. And of course, ever since then, hundreds more, mostly since then, were soldiers. Most of the 1,200 that were murdered on the day of Simchat Torah were just ordinary people in their beds, in their homes, at a dance festival. How do we do this? And I can tell you I'm on the committee of our synagogue and we had long discussions about this and within the community as well. And we came to a decision. And I think that what we decided to do, everyone's doing it a little differently. I would say what we decided to do though is fairly typical. It's finding that balance. And that balance is um, on the one hand, celebrating as always. We will, yes, dance with the Torah. First of all, because we must thank God. And even during this horrible year, there is still so much to thank God about. You know, when Hamas invaded on, on October 7th, Hamas anticipated that both the Arabs in Judea and Samaria 
and Hezbollah in the north would attack at the same time, and they didn't. That's a miracle. That's a miracle, and we have to be grateful for that. Here in Judea and Samaria, we have been at extreme high alert ever since October 7th, because we know that the same Hamas that runs Gaza or ran Gaza, okay, are in Judea and Samaria as well. The difference is, of course, is that the IDF is also in Judea and Samaria, unlike in Gaza, where we completely pulled out. But the IDF has been on very high alert, fighting battles, literally battles in the streets of the Arab cities in Judea and Samaria, particularly in Jenin and in Shechem. Um, and these are places not far from where I live. So it's a miracle that the IDF, for the most part, has been able to arrest, kill, defeat, whatever, the terrorists that are trying to do the same thing to us that was done by Hamas in Gaza to the people in the Gaza envelope. Um, we have a lot to be thankful for. We have a lot to be thankful for that Iran sent 300 missiles, rockets, all kinds of things in April. And again, the day before Rosh Hashanah, I, I was in my kitchen, my husband and I were cooking, okay? And all of a sudden, a siren goes. Of course, we did remember to turn off the stove, thank God. Uh, we ran to the shelter. Uh, and we're there for an hour because Iran sent 180 rockets over, and these did do damage. No one was killed, but they some of them landed, and they did do damage. Um, we have to thank God that no one was killed. So many people have been killed, but so many tell the story of how they were could have been killed and were not. So we have to remember to thank God. And of course, to rejoice God, because beyond all of this, not just this last year, we have to thank God for the Torah. The Torah is our foundation. The Torah is the direct word of God. The Torah tells us who we are, who God is, how we are supposed to behave, how we are supposed to honor God, and gives us such an anchor. And of course, continuing the rest of the Bible, but the foundation is there in the Torah and the five books of Moses. And and we must celebrate that and thank God for that. So we want to continue dancing and singing with the Torah. On the other hand, we, we need to remember what happened a year ago. And this is how we're doing that. First of all, we are joined congregations all over the country. In fact, this is an initiative that is taking place in Jewish communities all over the world. Uh, you, you, I'm sure are aware that the Torah scroll is covered with this velvet cover mantle or whatever that it's called. And um, that we have, there's this initiative to create a new one for one of the Torah scrolls for this holiday, for the holiday of Simchat Torah, where we will, the, the, um, this cover will be in memory of all the fallen soldiers and civilians of this past year. And it, and different communities are also deciding to dedicate their own to a particular soldier. We did this, we joined this initiative. Um, they have a set design, uh, and then they gave you these squares to embroider. A group of women from our community embroidered the squares that then go back to the organization was putting this together. And we're gonna get this covering. Um, I think we're already getting it today or tomorrow before the holiday. Um, we in our community decided to dedicate this to the memory of my nephew, Amichai. And this Torah scroll, this covering will be put on the Torah for the holiday of Simchat Torah and will lead all of the dancing. We take out all the Torah scrolls when we dance on Simchat Torah, but the lead Torah will be this one so that we will always, even as we're dancing and singing, we will be remembering the fallen soldiers and particularly my nephew, Amichai. There are seven rounds of dancing. They're all the same. I mean, each round of dancing is round and around, but like you, you cut each one and say, okay, we've done round one and you continue. And before each round of dancing, you're saying a bunch, some scripture and prayer to God, asking him to save us, etc. cetera. Uh, that's the standard. Uh, there's seven rounds like that. We have decided that at night on um, Wednesday, next Wednesday night, we will, the sixth round, will be a quiet round. Instead of dancing and marching around, we're gonna stand in place 
We will read the scriptures. We will read the prayers. The men will hold the Torah scrolls. We will have a three minute time of silence to remember all that happened this past year and the people that gave their lives. And then we will sing two songs. One is a song that asks God to help our brothers who imprisoned, who are ill, who, are, who, who aren't free. And this of course directs primarily to the hostages. It's a prayer, it's an ancient prayer, but it really is focusing particularly on those who are imprisoned, which is, you know, hostage by the enemy. So it's a prayer to bring back the hostages. And the second is a song that is a song of belief. It's a declaration of faith. I believe in the coming of Messiah, even though he shall tarry, I will always believe and hope that he will come very soon. Um, and we will end with that. And in that way, there will be one round that is not the usual dancing and singing. Uh, everything else will be the same. Will it really be the same? Will we have the same type of mood we normally do? You know, we're looking back on last year and we're always remembering where were we and what did we know? And as religious people last year, we don't put have the news or the internet on and we knew very little. Uh, the security personnel warned us that we had to be careful. There was a war going on in the South. Later on, we heard that some people were killed and it may even be as many as 80 people being killed. And we thought that was absolutely horrific. But we had no, we had did not have sirens where we were. We were too far from Gaza. Um, people in the north didn't have sirens from you know our area and further north there were no sirens. Um, so we really we were told that we need to be on high alert because the Arabs surrounding us could could attack us. But we didn't know uh, that this could be unusual, something different. We had no idea until later that evening when the holiday was over, and. To today, this year, we think last year, yes, we knew something was up. Yes, the, the young men started to leave and go to war, but we didn't know how bad it was because unfortunately we've been involved in so many rounds of war with Gaza. Not that it's not, not a big deal, but it's something that happens every few years. We didn't know it was worse than that. And so we look back and we say, a year ago, we were enjoying ourselves. You know, in the middle of the holiday during the day, we have a break in the prayers and the dancing, and we put out food, cake and wine. We'd make a kiddush. We sanctify the day with a blessing, cake and wine and, and pretzels and popcorn for the kids and candies. And it's just, and everybody's saying, you know, happy holiday. And we did that last year. We did that last year. It was probably about 1030 in the morning. We had no idea what was happening. And so someone this year said, last year, we had all of that celebration. We had no idea what was going on. This year, we will have the same celebration. We will have the Kiddush, but we will know what happened. So even though we're going to go forward with the celebration, I can't tell you that it will be the same. I don't think it can be the same because all of us in the back of our heads were saying, what were we doing last year? and what was going on in the country that we didn't know about, and what did we discover that evening? And that's that's just, you know, that's where we are. That's where we're going. Um, I have to tell you personally, uh, my sons, as you all know, were all drafted until about March. Two of them went back uh, in the summer, but on an easier duty, they weren't in Gaza, they were in their communities guarding for July, August. And I am now anticipating that my two younger sons are going to be called to Lebanon any day. My younger son already has a date to go to Lebanon um, on the 10th of November, um, but they may up that. Uh, my other son is waiting for a call any day. And that, of course, is also a worry. What will happen? And as I Knowing this, that this was the situation, I go back to the prayers that we prayed on Yom Kippur and on Rosh Hashanah, who will live and who will die. It takes on a whole new meaning. As you pray, you know your sons, your son-in-law, your children, your neighbors, your nephews, all of these people are in danger and will be in danger and praying to God that he will keep them safe. It's... Uh, 
that's it. That's what I, I, you know, have to present for today, but happy to engage questions or, or anything else. Sandra, thank you for sharing that. I would just collectively like to pray that for your family and for the community and for Shmuel and and everyone in the in the land in Judea and Samaria, that the, this celebration time of, of the feast it is mixed emotions, and we're hearing that. And so we pray that you can uh, push through with the mixture of emotions, and uh, that you're comforted very much by the Torah itself because when we're dancing with the Torah that that's life and living and so and victory we can proclaim victory for Israel for this this coming 2025 um so yes our hearts are with you as you manage these mixed emotions so um yes um so we would like to open the floor um, if people have comments or questions for Sandra, uh, please put your little hand up. I, put, okay. I can't remember. Sorry, okay. I can't remember how to put the hand up. So can I just say, um, first of all, Sandra, I'm sorry that I kept dropping out. I don't know what was happening, but my... It was just unstable or something, so I kept dropping out. So I'm sorry about that. But I wanted to say we went it, we went to the Melbourne event. Seven of us from our Bless Israel group went up, and there was only meant to be four thousand people, and there was around eight thousand people. The prime minister was there, but he wasn't allowed to give him. He wasn't allowed to speak, which was a good thing, I think. But we had a survivor from the Nova Festival speaking and he talked about how it was a miracle he was saved. But then, and he was talking about the trauma and then the next day he received a message that he had to go to Gaza. And I, I just couldn't comprehend like the trauma from Nova and then just having to go straight, straight into war. Um, and I was thinking about in Australia they did a survey <clears throat> about the younger people and half of them if there was a war here they would leave the country so totally different wow yeah totally different um I think that was yeah so I just thank you so much for sharing what you did and we're always praying we just can't imagine what it is like and especially you, with you for you, you know, with your sons at the moment. But we we thank you that you share, you know, took this time to share with us. Thank you, Janine. I, I just would say that uh, my nephew who fell in battle was in the United States um, on Simchat Torah last year. He had finished the army uh, about um, eight months or nine months before and went traveling, see the world before settling down uh, in Israel. And he, together with hundreds, if not thousands of young men and women like him just came and, and got on the first flight they could get on to get back to Israel on time. And that was that that was our young our young generation not only didn't leave, but those who were already around and could could have stayed, could have stayed in America, or Australia, wherever they were, they all came back, which yeah. is amazing. Yeah. Good. Yes, that's frightening statistics for Australia. We need mm. to uh... Be, be praying strong and hard for our generation, our young generation. So, yeah. Um, okay, so Anne, would you like to um, ask your question? Um, I'll put yeah. down my hand if I can. I, oh, no, I'll do that later. <laughs> I can't do it too. Yes, look, Sandra, thank you so much for sharing that. And and please know our hearts and our prayers, particularly be with like Christian friends of Israeli communities, that our hearts and our prayers are always for you and your children and Judea and Samaria and those soldiers out there. And then you've got the police and then you've got the army, the Air Force, the Navy, the government and um. It just keeps us praying all day. But so, so we're playing, praying particularly for your children. You know, all the children know Shamul. I know he has kids as well too. So everybody I can think of in Israel that I know, I pray personally for their kids like I know the guys here on the screen would do too. So know that 
feel our love, our prayers, they were with you. They do make a difference. Our God is a merciful, gracious, loving God. And just like you shared with us all about the feasts, we understand that better. And you understand mm. the contrast of that. God is merciful, is gracious, and yet we he sees the big picture. We don't. We're not God. Thank God. <laughs> and and yeah, and Australians definitely, Janine is totally right. We are not like the our, our nation, the young ones, don't have that fervent loyalty, that family um spirit that you've got in Israel. That God is evident in Israel, just the way your country thinks they operate operate um like you're all family they race home to be with family but like you say when one has fallen you consider that one you know them or you know their family's family or somebody and you consider them as family so no even i don't know if i can speak on behalf of who the people here but i think most of us here are here because we feel of you as family you know i say to people that i have family in israel who are in the war because i don't think in australia they understand it that why would i call Anybody in this role, I don't really, they aren't family, family. But to me, and I know I can see the people here emotionally, really, um, our hearts go out to you, Sandra. Our hearts, yeah. Thank no, you. I love it. Thank you, Anne. Yeah. Thank you, Anne. I appreciate that. Um, yes, Lynn. Yeah, I, I just wanted to say thank you ever so much. And also, you did that talk the other night with Shmuel. And if anybody hasn't listened to it, can I recommend that they listen to the recording because that was so good to hear your experiences on that day and just to hear you two talking. And just in case it was interesting, I don't know whether you can see, I've got a little, you know, the little badges that you do bring the back. The yellow ribbon. Back. Yeah, the yellow ribbon. Uh, just in case any of you have, I presume you have Amazon out in Australia, but yeah. Amazon do are selling these. So, I mean, okay, so it's to make money, but it is good, and it is a good thing to actually, when people ask you, what's, what's that about? It's good to be able to talk and give a different viewpoint of what's going on because people, it makes me, I think it makes us all so cross. I mean, you know what, we in the UK, and from UK from the others, and it, it like makes us so cross when you turn on the BBC and you see their take on the news, and then you turn on another channel, and it's like those soldiers that were killed on the base. And, you know, Sky News say 60 soldiers were injured, taken to eight different hospitals. So, you know, it is so different what you get on the news. And having something like this just gives opportunity to talk about and stand up for Israel and be counted, even if we can't go I used to go on the marches as rent a crowd against it, but if we can't do that now, it, we can talk to people when they ask you in your shop, oh, what's that for when you're queuing up somewhere? So that's from Amazon, and they were really cheap as well. So I recommend that. And thank you, and bless you for what you've shared today. It's so kind. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. That's a brilliant idea. I like that idea of wearing that little yellow thing. And there's also all kinds of stuff. We have this little booklet. Uh, Pam has, I think, a, a, a supply of them. Uh, Israel Story and Maps. It's little, okay? And we very often, exactly, we very often um, recommend throw a few in your pocketbook and someone say, well, what is this, Israel? Just hand yeah. it to them. And say, you know, take a look at this. This is going to help you understand really what's going on. There's just so many different things that ordinary people can do to raise awareness. And I, I want to mm. applaud you, Lynn, for that idea. And then just encourage others to do this. Everyone can find their own way to raise awareness in their own mm. circle of friends. Um, yes. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, Jim? Hi. Hi, everybody. Thank you again, Pam and Sandra. Uh, it's great to to be linked with you. So yeah, I, I too am from uh, from here in Blighty, uh, where we have a new Labour government, um, a bit less uh, sympathetic to Israel, and uh, the um, these huge pro-Palestinian marches are still continuing, which are being very liberally policed. All sorts of things are being said that you know really shouldn't be allowed. But um, I, I just would appreciate your prayers um my lovely wife penny is flying out to israel tonight uh sondra of course you um you 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 guys have it all the time uh she's flying out tonight with el al um we thought uh, el al is probably the best bet to keep flying 
Absolutely. And yeah. So I'm I'm taking her to Heathrow later. She's flying out tonight with a friend to go to the International Christian Embassy Jerusalem Conference. And uh, she's coming back Monday. Uh, they're staying at the YMCA um, uh, right opposite the King David Hotel. Um, so just uh, I'd appreciate just, you know, just remembering her uh, during the week um, in uh, in your prayers, of course. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not, you know, that worried about her. And of course, Sandra, you, you guys are living with this 24-7-365. Um, but uh, thanks again, guys. And uh, yeah, I like the like the previous caller. You know, we feel very linked with you. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you. And and please uh, tell your wife, you know, let her give me a call or send me an email. It would be lo lovely to see her if there's an opportunity. Thank you, Jim. Hello, Diane. How's everything in Newcastle? I'm going fine. Thank you, Pam. Thank you very much, both you, you and Sandra. Um, I just wanted to follow on from Lynn. Um, I wear my little badges of flags. And wow. uh, wear it every day. People look at it. Sometimes they ask what it's all about and why are you wearing it. But uh, I bought it in Israel. I don't know whether you can get them here. But um, I know that, um, who is it now? One of the um, AJA, I think, is selling them. So you can buy them here and just wear them little clips that you put on your T-shirt. It's just a very good thing to do. And I just want to say um, last um on the night of the 7th of October, uh, uh, 45 of us Christians from Newcastle joined the shul and um, we had an hour before they streamed the Sydney event and there were 12,000 people in Sydney and there are, I think, about eight or nine shuls around New South Wales that were streaming it. So there would have been a lot more than 12,000 people watching and um, we saw that wonderful performance. It was absolutely amazing. Um, Stephen Lowy spoke, Peter Dutton spoke, uh, the Premier of New South Wales spoke, and um, we had a. We didn't have the Prime Minister. He had you had him in Melbourne, but we did have uh, Mark Butler, who was representing our Prime Minister, and. Um, I had no idea, but he actually uh, said that his great grandparents were Jewish, and um, that was a big surprise to a lot of people, I think. But that's the first time in the whole of the last year that anybody in that side of government has actually spoken out in a strong way about the Jewish connection, and it was really it was well received, and uh, it was a, a lovely surprise. So, just wanted to share that with you. And um, I, I agree with Lynn that it's so good to wear something that sets you apart. It's a silent witness. People see it. Whatever they do with it, they might ask you questions, and that's always a good segue into saying something. So bless you all. Shalom, shalom. Mm. Thank you. Wonderful, Diane. Um, and you have the question this time now. You're on mute. You're on mute. You have to unmute. I'm so busy lowering my hand this time to get that right. I forgot to unmute. Sorry. <laughs> um, I agree with Lynn and the ladies. I got this little Star of David and the book, Sandra, thank you very much, those Israel maps. So now um, I've got a new church and they're awesome. So I'm now really excited, do the over 60s thing, take my little Israel maps, wear my little Star of David. And, and, and it is just like lady saying we can like meet people. We've got a talking point thing. And, um, and now Israel is just like, we're at church, we're talking about Israel, whether you like it or not. So here we go. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so it's beautiful. And supporting um, Jewish Israeli um, firms that, you know, um, are struggling during the war. So my friend buys a lot of stuff from Israel to so ask to get me a few things and a little menorah too. But my daughter took the menorah. I was going to have it behind me, but it, it's gone. <laughs> so I have to get another one. So thank you. Yeah, that was just an idea. It works. Thanks, Lynn, for sharing and ladies. That's awesome. <laughs> if you um, don't have a, if you don't Pam, have a, can I say something? I, I don't have the hand thing on, on my can I say something, Pam? Yes, of course, Mari. Yeah. I, I just want to say that I am in the Perth Messianic Assembly. 
and we do we read the Torah every Saturday and we pray for Israel on an ongoing basis. And every two months we have instead of a message, we the group or the church together join together and we pray for Israel. And we also support financially, of course. So for us as a messianic assembly, that's that's what it's about. The first thing, other God, and then Israel is the focus of our services, and it's beautiful. And we dance the the Hebrew dance and all of that. So I'm part of that on an ongoing basis. It's beautiful. That's and wonderful. also, I want to say that in America, they had this this uh, gathering uh, over the, the Saturday, but it was Sunday for us where there were 250 and nearly 300,000 of people praying all day. And for one hour, they prayed for Israel. And it was so beautiful. I even cried seeing that they had a great big board uh, on the screen. The stage was really good. And then they had seven people with the big flag of Israel uh, on the stage. And, and they prayed for Israel for one, one, hour, one hour. All different people, they had Jews singing uh, Hebrew songs and all of that. So you're not alone. The people all over the world thinking of you and praying for you. And, and we know it is God's ordained that you, that you become victorious. Thank you. Thank you, Marie. That is very encouraging to hear. Thank you. Anybody needs a map, a book of maps? Just go on the website and the request will come to me. Um, or you can just email me, pam at cfoic.com, and we can get the little book to you. <laughs> oh, let me just mention one thing, a bit of a technical issue that it just occurred to me. I don't know if you got an email telling you this, but um, we've had a bit of a, a change in our email system. Uh, and we used to send reminders for these meetings, for all of the Zoom meetings that we do uh, separately to the people who sign up for these meetings using a, a different system, basically it, like sending a regular email. And we can no longer do that. And so every email that we send, we have to do through something called constant contact. Did, did you all receive reminders for this meeting in the last day or so? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, what... What my only concern is because there are people who unsubscribe from our regular twice a week emails, but only want these reminders. And then we cannot then, in other words, if you've unsubscribed from the main email system, we cannot send you reminders. So if you know of anybody or if Pam, you get a word from anybody who's saying, why didn't I get a reminder? What they're going to have to do is resubscribe to our email system, but they can also say, I only want this or that kind of email. So this is just a, a technical announcement, but I wanted to make sure that, you know, you knew this because I don't want to lose anybody along the way who wants to join these. Hello. Can you hear me? Anyone hear me? No. Yes. 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 Oh, it's Dot from Australia. Uh, I don't have a hand. I don't know what to this is the first time I've spoken on this. I've watched you often, but not spoken before because I didn't know what to do. But I just have to share something that I've seen on online just recently, and I don't know what, what the group is that are putting this on, but there's so many stories of the wonderful miracles of God that are taking place during this war. Um, I read one where there was a soldier who was cleaning his gun and it went off by mistake, and all the other guys were, were bothered about it. And then they looked and they saw that he had accidentally shot a terrorist and saved them all. <laughs> this terrorist was about That's to amazing. Pop, up, pop <laughs> out of one of the, the tunnels. And um, and then there was another one where a, a soldier felt that he, he had suddenly remembered he hadn't said his evening prayer. So he he's all the others are lying down, but he's standing saying his prayers and he suddenly sees the glinting, a, a glint somewhere and, and looks carefully. And yes, there's a terrorist about to shoot at them. So this was just one of about eight miracles that this man was saying that would happened in the in the war. So God is there and God's hand is over you and he's protecting you. Breaks my heart every time I see the pictures of these beautiful soldiers that have given their lives. 
but you know god is just protecting some of them i don't know why some and others not that's the question as you would say we we don't understand that so we just trust god but there's just i was so thrilled to see these stories of the wonderful miracles and i mean that the the, the 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 thing from Iran, you know, should have killed a lot of people, but didn't kill anyone. Right, amazing, God just amazing. Must, must have had his angels in the sky protecting them or something. I don't know, but you know, it just thrilled me to bits. And I have missed you, and I must send you an email. And and it's good to see you. Thank, Thank you. you. It's Hello. so wonderful Bless to see you. you. Wonderful you. to Bless see you, darling. <laughs> yeah. Dora, can I just share. It's okay. it's when, um, oh, sorry. No, can I just share? When you're talking about the rockets, I don't know if any of you've heard of Amar Tisfati. He put a thing on that yeah. in the last year there's been thirteen thousand two hundred missiles from Gaza, thirteen thousand four hundred from Lebanon, four hundred from Iran, one hundred and eighty from Yemen, and sixty from Syria. And when you think how many of those must have got diverted, there's a lot to thank God for. Amen. When you Amen. think of that number that's come in the Amen. last... Amen. More from Lebanon than Gaza. Yeah. And, um, and Lynn and Dorothy, what I would like to add to it is why aren't the nations and the nation's leaders waking up to see that the the, the God of Israel is with them. Sh why isn't this fear rising in them when they see the miracles? And I guess that's my question. When, when will they wake up? When will they see what's happening? So um, we can continue to pray for that. Sandra, do you have any final words? Well, I just want to... Thank everyone for joining us today and for joining us, you know, monthly on these meetings. And uh, I want to express my appreciation to all of you for your support, whether it's how you wear your little badges or pins or, you know, Star of David and, and encouraging people to think and pray about Israel, um, whether it, you are providing financial support. Our work is vital. We are, you know, have paid particular attention this past year to making sure the communities are protected with cameras and other security equipment that is vital um, and so many other things that we're doing, of course, and you've all been a part of that. And I want to thank you for that. And I hope that you will all join me. I'm sure you do in a prayer for a better year. Yes. And uh, we have a lot to look forward to. There was a lot of opportunity. It's very possible that, you know, this will be the year that we deal a crumbling blow to Hamas in Gaza, yeah. to Hezbollah in Lebanon, and, and, and to Iran. And there are people in those places, I'm not sure how many in Gaza, but there are people in Lebanon and people in Iran that are good people that are being yeah. sub really, you know, put down and, and, and really not given ability to express themselves uh, by the terrorists that run those countries. And I, I believe that we have a possibility uh, for better relations with these countries if we can get rid of Hezbollah and, and uh, the Mullahs and Iran and all these others. So it's a tall order. Uh, I wish that the United States and Australia and, and Britain and all these wonderful countries uh, would realize that this is an opportunity to put together an international coalition to get rid of these horrible people. Yes, like they did in World War II, okay? This is what is needed. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, okay. barring that, uh, we'll keep doing what we can do. And I if you, I believe if all of us pray, God will surely listen. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you, everybody. It's um, gone uh, five past eight. Thank you, uh, Sandra, for uh, letting us partake and share in Judea and Samaria. And uh, we, we do, we pray all the very, very best uh, for uh, Israel in the 2025. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, those who are blind, mm -hmm. let them see.